didn't want to what, sweetie? I, I didn't want to play his game. I don't want to play his game. The child looked up at her mother and hugged her tightly. He, he t- touched me and he made me touch him. Marie frowned and gently began stroking the child's hair, comforting her, lightly shushing to calm her down. Shh, it's okay. Mama's here now. It was a nightmare, that's all. The girl just had a scary nightmare. Everything is okay fine now, okay? Don't worry about it anymore. She watched Sally look up at her, her breathing chopped up from her crying and smile. Oh, okay, Mama. Her mother smiled and kissed her forehead. Now go wash up. Don't want to play with your friends with a dirty face. Sally let out a small giggle and ran off to the bedroom to wash her face. Later that day, Johnny and his brother came back from work. Frank sighed, smiling when he saw Sally wave to him. The father waved back, closing the car door and making his way up to the house. Johnny looked up at Sally as well and smiled, waving to her. The child's smile slowly wilted, showing less happiness in it, but she waved back as well. Johnny also walked inside the house, pausing when he heard the conversation between his brother and wife. Sally, what? Frank asked. She had a nightmare, a very bad one. She said, he touched her. Well, who the hell is he? I don't know, Frank, but it was only a nightmare. I just wanted to inform you of what's been going on with her and why she was acting differently. Johnny furrowed his brow in anger, his knuckles turning white. Then calming down and quickly thinking fast, he put on a smile and walked into the room, making it look like he had just walked into their conversation and Rose's brow. Oops, did I interrupt something? He asked, watching the couple shake their heads. Johnny smiled again and thumbed back in the direction of the car. I'm going to head to the store. Do you need anything, Marie? The woman smiled and looked towards the kitchen. Yes, actually, can you get me some eggs? Milk, bread, and juice. Johnny nodded, about to leave until he paused. Sally wanted to come along too. Just wanted to inform you. Murray smiled. Thank you, John. He nodded again, made his way out to the house, keys in hand. Looking over to Sally with her friends, he cupped his hand over his mouth. Sally! The child looked up at him and stared. Come on, let's go to the store. John made his way to the car, gesturing for the girl to follow. Sally sat there for a moment, then placed her dolls down on the grass. I'll be back. Please watch over Marzipan and Lily for me. Jenny and Sarah smiled at and nodded, continuing to play their game of dolls without her. Sally reluctantly made her way around the car, climbing into the passenger seat and buckling herself in. Did... Mama wants you to go to the store? She asked. Johnny nodded and put the keys in the ignition, turning it on and backing out of the driveway. Yep, she wanted me to get some food for you, too. Maybe I can get you something, too. He grinned, looking down at the child. Sally nervously smiled back and looked ahead, watching the scenery pass by. As soon as they got to the road leading to the store, Sally noticed... He wasn't slowing down to turn into the parking lot. She furrowed her brows confused and looked up at him. Uncle Johnny, the store is back that way, she said, pointing in the direction of the whole food store. But nothing came from the man. He continued to drive, a very faint smile on his face. The child sat up, looking past the back seat watching the store slowly grow smaller till it was out of sight. Realizing they weren't going grocery shopping, she watched her uncle drive into the small parking lot in the community park near town. No one went to the park on Sundays. Sally felt nervous. Her breathing quickened, watching the man with wide eyes. Johnny put the car into park, turned the ignition off, and looked at the child, anger obviously showing in his features.
is just in, a couple finds the body of eight-year-old Sally Williams in the community park. The week-long search is now closed. More tonight at nine. She could have sworn she closed her door before climbing to bed. Guess I forgot. Getting up from the warmth and comfort of her bed, the teen made her way across the room and shut the door. Before she could climb back into her covers, a creaking noise in the hall rose up. Were her parents up? They must have checked on her to see if she was asleep or something. As soon as she got her legs covered up, the teen froze, hearing a faint sound of crying, though it sounded like a child. Slowly rising up from her bed once more, the girl made her way to the door and opened it. The crying seemed to be louder outside of her room. Peering down through the darkness, the teen crept down the hallway, following the sounds of the whimperings. Once getting to the end of the, the hall, the girl gasped. Sitting on the floor in front of the moonlit window was a little girl. She was hunched over crying. How did she get in their house? Was it through the window? Swallowing hard, the teen spoke up. Who? are you and how did you get into my house she asked suddenly the crying stopped the child slowly moved her trembling hands away from her face and looked behind her twitching lightly blood replaced her tears staining her hands there was a deep clot of blood and hair on the side of her head blood leaking from the wound down her face and onto her dirty pink nightgown her bright green eyes seemed like they saw right through the teen's soul. This is my house, the child spoke, her voice raspy, sounding as if she was struggling to speak. The girl's body twitched and wriggled oddly as she rose up to her feet, turning to face the teen. Her feet were muddy as if she'd been running through mud. Scrapes covered her knees and legs and the end of her gown was torn and tattered. The name Sally could be just barely seen sewn into the front. Reaching out with her blood-soaked hands, the girl smiled, the blood staining her teeth as she spoke. Want to play with me?